Hi, welcome back. And today I'm gonna do a setup of my August insert. And I'm very sorry for the lighting. I've Google. I've tried all the options that I can find in my phone, and I still can't find the function to turn off the auto auto adjustment of the lighting in the video. I'm still gonna continue to look for that. And in the meantime, I hope you guys will bear with me. So here I'm going to set up my um, August insert and I'm still using this Travelers Company 026 dot grid insert. And usually when I want to set up an insert, I will break in the, the book a little bit. Yep. So here is me just breaking it a little, not too much. Yep. And today I have a team in mind. I want to use this team holds. CMS337 vintage ticket stamp together with its um what do you call this die cuts yeah I actually uh contemplating whether I want to get a die cut machine the big shot die cut machine I have the side cake but I saw some beautiful die cuts that are just too big to go through the psychic machine but the big shot machine is quite big and you know I I don't want to get a machine that I I rarely is going to use but I did saw some of those die cuts that are extremely gorgeous that you know I can use in my journal but then yeah what do you guys think maybe you can let me know whether I should get one <laughs> anywho back to this um, setup I think I took a, a piece of this uh, leftover craft paper it's from Tim Holtz. It's a craft core cardstock. So meaning if you, I think, scratch it or something, it will show the craft core at the bottom of the paper. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to use it to cut out a piece of the vintage tickets. So I'm going to measure out how much I want to cut it out. Like I said, the sidekick machine is very small. It's like two and a half inch wide. So luckily these vintage tickets are quite small so it can go through the psychic machine. But this craft core paper is a bit too thick. So later I think you can see me struggling through with the putting through this die. Oh sorry, I did it off camera. I didn't even notice I paused it for that long. So yeah, I have a hard time to put it through. I think the craft core paper is way too thick. Uh, and then, anywho, I'm gonna stamp this down. Another thing about the craft core paper is it doesn't take in the distress ink at all. So I I I didn't know that, but I still use my stands stands on to just to be on the safe side that whatever I stamp down will stay down, <laughs> will stay on. So yep. But the problem came when I tried to distress it. So next up, I'm gonna, since I accidentally paused it for too long just now, I'm gonna show you another ticket I'm gonna be making here. At first I thought I would show just one ticket, but since the first one I paused it and you didn't see the process, I'm gonna show you this one. Now I use this sort of like a lavender, light blue uh, craft paper. This is thinner than the cardstock. Uh, I still have a bit of a hard time to run it through my sidekick machine, but at least it's not that difficult. Like the card stock, uh, like the craft core card stock. So I'm gonna cut it out with my new Team Holtz Tonic Studio scissor. Now I love this scissor. This is by far the best scissor that I have. It's awesome. For those of you who is a scissor fanatic like me, <laughs> yeah, I have lots of scissor by the way. So first you put down the, the die and then your material that you're going to cut and then the cutting mat. So my sidekick machine, well by right you should actually stuck the sidekick machine down. But I didn't because it's on a cutting mat so it won't stay down anyway. So I'm just going to hold it down with my hand and voila. There you go gorgeous piece of vintage tickets and I'm gonna stamp it down with that stamp <laughs> so sorry for my so the for the glaring as the lamb is on top of 
of of what I'm doing, where I'm working right now. Yep. Again, a stash on jet black ink, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I like how the how it turns out, the way it turns out, and here are the three pieces. And last but not least, I'm gonna do one on a on a vellum me not vellum me on a glassing paper or transparent paper, and I'm gonna use the stem from Lin Chianing. It's a whole set of stem where you can create your own vintage tickets. Yeah, so I'm going to create a big one. First, stem down the core or the main vintage tickets. And just now, as you can see in my container, there are numbers, there are months. So all that you can use it on your vintage tickets. And if you're creative, you can do it however you want. And they have this uh, geometrical pattern stem as well for you to stem on your tickets. I actually refer to the website where I got this stem. Uh, yes, this stem. Uh, something of mine to get some idea how to create the tickets. I'm still not that creative in doing that, so I just follow the illustration on the website. So I stamp down August because this is my August spread. And next, I'm going to be stamping down 1st of August on the right hand side of the, the stamp. Of the tickets, I'm sorry. Now the reason I set up this insert so early is because I think I'm going to be busy this weekend. So since I have the time today, I might as well set it up now. Okay, while waiting for the glassing paper to dry up, I'm going to distress these three tickets from, that I made from Tim, Tim Holtz stamps and die. I am going to use the darker walnut color and here I'm trying to distress this craft core paper first and I noticed that you know the ink won't stay on at all so I gave up to distress this piece because it won't stay on it won't dry up it won't yep so I gave up that and I distressed this the other two pieces instead and it turned out gorgeous now this setup I did something very I don't know, should I call it stupid? <laughs> well, maybe it's too harsh of a word. I did something funny, which you will see later on. And uh, I love how these two tickets turn out with, after this, the distressing. I think I'm going to make more of it. Uh, some of you who have been following my channel know that I'm a vintage ticket fanatic. A real, real big fanatic. I have like tons of vintage tickets collection in full rolls you know like thousand pieces roll that type of full rolls yep so i love creating two and i use the rotary cutter the perforated rotary cutter to give the vintage ticket a more real look as it had have this really gorgeous perforated cuts at the side and now i'm gonna put everything down I want to have a little bit of a collage, but not too much. So I will incorporate some vintage paper as well to put it as a background. And I ended up didn't use that green big vintage ticket that I first created. So I'm here, I'm looking through my bits of vintage paper that I kept it on my little clipboard. It's absolutely gorgeous and I can hang it on my wall and it's so cute. <laughs> so here I'm gonna look through my vintage paper. Now I have to take out this card for a bit because they are too thick so I can't do this. Uh, so I end up put the card at the back of the clipboard. And I have decided to use that piece instead. So I am going to glue it down. I'm I'm ensure I'm I'm just ensuring that I want the correct side to put the glue on. I have experience of putting on the wrong side. Yeah. 
But then, you, in a while, I noticed that something was very wrong here. <laughs> and here we go. You can see where the thing that's wrong. Oh, in about, I think. Now, ta-da! <laughs> I did it on the back of the page and upside down. <laughs> so if it's on the right side up, at least I can leave it as the deco at the back of the page. But I can still salvage the tickets because I use the glue tape and it's not it's sticky. But then I can peel it out without much damage to <laughs> to my cover. But then the vintage paper, I can't because I stuck it down with the glue. So here I am taking out another piece of vintage paper. A lesson to this. Always check whether your book is in the right position before you put down anything. Because, yeah, I put the insert aside and was doing the tickets and I just didn't occur. It just didn't occur to me to check whether the book is the right side up. Or even if it's in the you know it's whether it's the front page. Ah, uh, yeah, it's so funny. So I just leave my the back page as it is. Here I'm gonna put down that lavender tickets. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the same vintage paper as the background to have the continuity as the collage at the bottom. And I actually did a lot of gluing down off camera because it's becoming too long my video. And here I stamp down my August, but then I want to put the one nine, and I don't know what has got into me. I put a zero instead. I come on, it's ten years ago, two zero zero nine. It's supposed to be one nine. So I ended up covering it up with a sticker, craft sticker that's one of the freebie that I got. <laughs> And here I'm stamping down this gorgeous tree stem from Camille Garden or Chamille Garden. <laughs> and it turned out gorgeous. And then I am going to stem down uh, on this frame sticker from Cat's Life Press. This word stem said, um, what did it say? Life is in the details, yes. And I'm going to stick that down. So my introductory page is going to be very simple, but I like it. And next is my month page. So I'm going to use this Stamper Anonymous, Tim Holtz, uh, alphabet stamp. To stamp down the word August. Now I'm a, bit, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant because I actually can't see properly so I have to pull the insert nearer to me so I can really stamp it straight and I like how it turns out and then I'm going to stamp down 2019 as well using the Versafine Onsi Black Ink Pad or Stamp Pad Again, okay, sorry for the glaring <coughs> Next up, I am going to stamp down this monthly calendar frame stamp with again Versify but vintage sepia color. And I really, really push it down to ensure I got everything on my page. Voila! And then I'm going to be using this. Um, calendar number stamp recently I've been obsessed with that font that I just bought I don't know what is it what font is it called is this one that I'm gonna stamp down I have three fonts and uh, for this calendar number and I love this the best so here we go it's absolutely cute and I noticed that I stamped the calendar a bit too 
too near to the bottom so I'm going to stamp something on that empty space in the middle which is this Mikia or Mikia stamp from Taiwan it's a bicycle stamp now I love bicycle stamps I do not know why and I'm using this Versafine toffee color stamp pad and that wording at the bottom of the bicycle state um, love is in the journey and then I felt that it's still too empty so I'm going to use some washi I'm going to use this classic -y brown washi the skinny ones because there aren't a lot of space but then it still seems a bit bare at that corner so I'm just gonna put the washi there at the top and then at the bottom as well and at this point I'm actually very frustrated with the fluttering so and um, you know it's, uh, it's it's very irritable and very frustrating for me to keep adjusting the lighting but then uh, I'm gonna find out I really am going to find out how to really remove that setting for my phone. And here I moved the brown washi a bit higher because I'm going to put this grid brown washi as a layering on top of that light brown washi. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoy my journal with me. And until I see you guys again, take care. Bye.